الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode. Inshallah, in this very episode, we're going to be speaking about the virtue of the Qur'an, especially in the month of Ramadan, a month in which the words of Allah Jalla were revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Before we get to the virtue of Al-Qur'an, the book of Allah Jalla the book that was sent to each one of us, the book that was sent to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to take mankind out of the realms of darkness and show them guidance, show them light. I want to ask each one of you a question. If I was to ask you, would you love to read the Quran and understand the Quran? I'm sure all of you would answer the, uh, with the affirmative. You would all say, of course, we would love to uh, read the Quran and understand the Quran because the Quran was sent for that very purpose. The Qur'an was sent that we could read the Qur'an and understand the Qur'an and implement the Qur'an within our lives. But unfortunately, the vast majority of us, we read the Qur'an, but we don't understand the Qur'an. We enjoy listening to the recitation of the Qur'an, but we don't know what the Imam is reading. We don't understand what the Imam is saying. The verses sound familiar because we've heard them on numerous occasions in the masjid, uh, on YouTube, on our phones, in our cars, but we don't know what the Imam is saying. We don't want to be in that state. We want to understand the book of Allah Jalla And this is why the Quran was revealed. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says in Surah Ibrahim, Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Anzalnahu Ilayka Li Tukhrij Al-Nasa Min Al-Zulumati Ila Al-Nur. Allah Jalla addressing His Habib Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He says, Kitabun, this book, Ay Al-Qur'an, the Qur'an we have revealed, anzalnahu ilayka, we have revealed it to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This kaf al-khitab to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is telling us that he revealed this Qur'an to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. To take mankind out of the realms of darkness towards light. This lam here, brothers and sisters, this is known as lam at ta'lil It tells us the illa. It tells us the very reason why Allah has revealed this Quran. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li nasa. Why? So that he can take mankind out of the realms of darkness towards light. This Quran will take us away from immorality, indecency, illicit actions, illicit behavior, and it will take us to that that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will take us towards guidance. But how will this transition take place, brothers and sisters, if we do not have a strong relationship with the Quran? How will this transition take place if we do not understand what we are reading? And this is why we have to make a proactive effort to read the Quran and understand the Quran bi idnillahi ta'ala. And this is why the Quran was revealed. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah Jalla wa ala says in another position of the Quran, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ And we revealed to you, O Muhammad, let us all say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ This book, dhikr here means the Quran. لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ To inform mankind, to tell them what we have revealed to them. لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ What has been revealed to them. But the vast majority of us, we read the Qur'an. Why? Because we have heard the hadith that every letter you read, you get 10 rewards. So our mindset is according to that. That we think that every time we read, we're going to get reward. But we don't read to understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is very unfortunate. Because if you look at the purpose of revelation, why the Qur'an was revealed, then you would know that the purpose behind revelation is that we read the Qur'an, we understand the Qur'an, and therefore, and thereafter, we implement the Qur'an bi ta'ala. And this is why today I'm going to share with you the four ta's. First ta is... Tilawa. The second ta is tafahum. The second ta is tadabbur. And the next one is tatbiq. What does tilawa mean? Tilawa means you recite the book of Allah Jalla wa ala. Inna allatheena yatluna kitab Allah. Those who recite the book of Allah. But it's not just recitation. After tilawa, it needs to be tafahum. 
You need to understand what you're reading. You need to make an effort to understand what you're reading because this is why the Quran was revealed. After you've made effort to understand what you are reading, then you do tadabbur, you contemplate upon those verses and how each verse that was revealed, there is this background, khalfiyah behind this verse and there is an amazing story attached to each verse. The 23 years of Nabuwa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his Makki life, his Madani life, the Makkan period, the, 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 the period in Medina, all of these verses were revealed to him over the course of 23 years, every single verse has some rich history behind it. There is a purpose behind it. You will only appreciate that when you do tilawa, when you do, when you have tafahum, you understand what you're reading, and thereafter tadabbur, when you contemplate upon those verses. And it doesn't end there, brothers and sisters. After that, the final responsibility for each one of us is tatbiq, and that is implementation of all of those verses. What does that mean? That means that Allah Jalla wa ala, He has prohibited many things in the Qur'an. Everything that He has prohibited, we have to accept that as a prohibition. We have to accept that as something that is unlawful. Everything that He has made lawful, permissible, that which is halal, we have to accept that as halal. Al-halalu ma ahalla Allahu fi kitabihi. Wal-haramu ma harram Allahu fi kitabihi. Wa ma sakata anhu. Allah Jalla wa ala, whatever he made haram in the book of Allah, that is absolutely haram. Haram mahad, absolutely haram. And that which he has made halal in the Quran, it is absolutely pure, it is absolutely permissible. But if you don't understand the Quran, how are you going to know which is impermissible, which is permissible, that which is lawful, that which is unlawful, that which is halal and that which is haram. And the one that Allah Jalla wa ala, will not question you about وَمَا سَكَتَ عَنْهُ The one in relation to which he remained silent, he didn't say anything. How would you know all of this if you do not understand the Qur'an? Today we find that the Qur'an has prohibited alcohol, that yet we find many people drinking. The Qur'an has prohibited gambling. Many people find themselves in that. Qur'an has prohibited fornication, zina. Many people fall into zina, so on and so forth. And there are many other examples from the Qur'an. All of these prohibitions they are not strict for each one of us. They are not pressure for each one of us. They have not been prohibited to make our life difficult in any way, but they, all of these prohibitions, uh, Allah Jalla wa ala has placed in the Quran to make us better human beings, to create stability in society, to create prosperity in society. But unfortunately, many of us don't follow those rules. Many of us, we fail to acknowledge those rules set out by Allah Jalla in the Quran. And one of the prime reason is we don't understand what we're reading. We don't contemplate on those verses. We don't reflect on those verses and we don't implement those verses. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you something that each one of us should feel very proud of. And that is the Quran is the most printed book on the face of this earth. The Qur'an is the most printed book on the face of this earth. If you go to Medina al munawwara and you go to the Qur'an printing complex, Mujamma Malik Fahad li Tiba'a al-Mas'haf al-Sharif, where the Qur'an is printed, you will see every day there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Qur'an that are being printed. This is in Saudi Arabia. Think about Bangladesh, think about Pakistan, think about India. This is Asia, think about Europe, think about Africa and different parts of the world where Quran is being printed every single day. The most printed book on the face of this earth. That there is not a single moment where the Quran is not being printed. Allahu Akbar. This is from the fadl, the virtue of the of Allah Jalla wa ala. And you know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that I have taken the responsibility to preserve the Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra we reveal this Qur'an and we have taken the responsibility to protect and preserve the book uh, that we have sent down. Allahu Akbar. If that job was given to me and you, we would fail. We would not be able to preserve and protect the Qur'an. But Allah Jalla wa ala says we have taken that responsibility that Allah will protect the Qur'an. This is why the Qur'an is the most printed book on the face of this earth. Number two, the Qur'an is the most read book on the face of this earth. While we are sitting here right now in Ramadan, 
and many people in different mosques are reading the Quran. Many people in their houses are reading the Quran. Many people reading the Quran on their phone. Many people while on the move, on the bus, they're reading the Quran. Going to work, they're reading the Quran. Many people just before going to sleep, they're reading the Quran. This is just the United Kingdom. Think about different parts of the world. That while you are sleeping after tarawih, many people will be reading the Quran in different parts of the world because of the time variation. So there is not a single moment where someone is not reading the Quran. Allahu Akbar. The most printed book on the face of this earth. The most read book on the face of this earth. This is something for us to be very proud of. Unfortunately, the sad news is it is the least understood book on the face of this earth. Allahu Akbar. The most printed the most read, but the least understood book on the face of this earth. If your young child comes back from school and he or she, they bring a book from school, why do they bring that book? So that they can read it and they can understand it. If you go to the shop and you pick up a magazine to read, what is the purpose behind picking up this magazine, purchasing this magazine? So that you can read and understand it. When you open your phone and you go to uh, see the latest news, what is the purpose? So you can read it and understand it. Every single person picks up different types of material with the intention that they're going to read it and understand it. They're going to extract lessons from it. They're going to take some benefit from it. But unfortunately, the vast majority of us, we open the book of Allah Jalla not to understand it, but because of the purpose of thawab. That there is nothing wrong with that. The hadith of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that every letter you read, you get 10 rewards. And that should be our way forward, but that shouldn't be our main focus. Our main focus should be that we all make an effort to understand the book of Allah jalla wa ala. And if we're able to do that, then we will be able to strengthen our relationship with Allah jalla wa ala. Imam Hassan al-Basari rahmatullahi alayhi, who passed away 110 Hijri, he says, uh, you see the people that came before us, they used to see the Qur'an as a personal letter from Allahu Jalla wa Ala, Allahu Akbar. That if your loved one sent you a letter today, in this day and age we don't have letters, but there was a time once uh, where even we experienced writing letters to one another, waiting for months for a letter to arrive, and we used to look forward to that letter. What did this person write to me? If your loved one, they wrote a letter to you and you didn't understand this letter, what would you do? You would make all effort, you would exhaust all of your effort to go and find out what is said in this letter. If you didn't understand the language, you would go to somebody who understands it. You would exhaust all of your energy to find out what is in this letter. Imam Hassan al-Basari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says that the people that came before us, who is he referring to? The Sahaba Radwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. They used to see the Quran as a personal message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Every time Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, ya ayyuhaladina amanu, ya ayyuhaladina amanu, in different positions of the Quran, the Sahaba used to think that this verse was speaking to them directly. And this is why Sahabi al Jalil ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he used to read each verse, he used to stop at each verse and he used to understand this verse and he used to implement it within his life and then he would move on to the next verse. Allahu Akbar. This was his relationship with the Quran. This is how he approached the Quran. And this is why Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he himself says that I know every single verse when it was revealed and what is the background behind this verse. Allahu Akbar. From the beginning of the Quran, Alif, Lam, Mim, all the way to the end of Surah An-Nas, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu knows every single verse, why it was revealed, where it was revealed. Allahu Akbar. This was their relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah jalla wa ala speaking about the believers and the quality of the believers and how the quality of the believers should be. He says something amazing in the book of Allah jalla wa ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَّةً يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ In the very beginning we find emphasis, ta'akid, indeed, those 
yatluna kitab Allah, those who recite the book of Allah Jalla wa ala. Remember what I said, recitation doesn't mean just you open a portion of the Qur'an and you read, Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati. No, recitation means the four ta's, tilawa, tafahum, tadabbur, and tatbiq. You recite, you understand, you contemplate, and you implement within your life. This is what Allah Jalla is telling us. Those who recite the book of Allah Jalla those who recite the words of Allah, the kalam of Allah, yatluna kitab Allah. And the word yatluna, brothers and sisters, it's interesting. Those of you who studied Arabic grammar, you would know yatluna is fi'al mudari'. It's a word in the future tense. And the one that is mudari' yufidul istimrar. It gives us the benefit of something that happens regularly. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ Allah. Those who read the Qur'an not only just once, not only twice, but those who read the Qur'an frequently, those who have a strong relationship with the Qur'an, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ Allah وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَةِ And those who stand before Allah Jalla wa Ala. What's interesting is, those who read the Qur'an and those who pray, what is the relationship between the both? That when we say Allahu Akbar and we enter Salah, what is the very first thing that we have to read? After subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, we say a'udhu billah, ta'awudh and basmala, and then immediately after that we praise Allah by reading Surah Fatiha. Look at the relationship between the ta'alluq between these two words. Inna al-lazina yatluna kitab Allah wa aqamu salah and those who pray. Wa anfaqu mimma razaqnahum sirran wa alaniyyatan and those who spend in the path of Allah, because Allah says in the Qur'an, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ And spend in the path, the money that I have given you, Allah Jalla wa ala tells us. This information is found in the Qur'an. So what's interesting is everything comes back to the Qur'an in this verse. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَّةً Those who spend in the path of Allah, especially in the month of Ramadan, those of us who are helping different charities, different humanitarian organizations, we are given covertly, overtly, we are given openly and discreetly. Remember Allah says in the end, يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورَ They are hoping for reward where the reward is infinite. Allahu Akbar. Allah could have said, لَمْ تَبُورَ but he says, Lan and Nafi, which means never ever, never ever will their reward stop. But that reward Allah is speaking about is Jannah, my dearest brothers and sisters. Let us make an effort to understand the book of Allah. The book of Allah should not just be on our shelves. It's not something that we, we, we hang in our car. It's not something that we give to our relatives on their marriage. But the book of Allah is my life companion. The book of Allah, the words of Allah are precious, valuable to me. It is that which will bring change to my life. It will take me out of the realms of darkness towards light. But I have to make an effort to understand the book of Allah. If you have aged, you are now 40, you are now 50, now 60. Don't let shaitan make you think that you will never understand the Quran. Subhanallah, even on this channel, subhanallah, there is a Quran program. There is a Quran program on this channel by Mufti Saleh Hafizahullah uh, Ta'ala. Regularly we find elderly people calling in to recite to him so that he can rectify their recitation. Subhanallah bihamdi. People out there who are making a proactive effort, people out there who are taking a step to understand the Quran. And do you think Allah will not make it easy for you? Man jadda fa wajada. The one who tries, Allah will open the door for them from sources they perceive not. You have to make that effort. So don't give up, don't let shaitan make you think, I can't read, I'm too old, I don't have good memory, I didn't read Qaeda when I was young, I didn't read Sifara when I was young, how am I going to do it? There are 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old, 70 year old people who make an effort and they are able to read the Quran. There are many elderly men that I have met who have passed the age of 60 and they have memorized a huge portion of the Quran during the latter part of their life. How was that possible? Because they made an effort. Brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla wa Ala made the Quran easy for us. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرٍ Allah Jalla wa Ala says that we have made this Quran easy. So don't call it difficult. Make an effort to read the Quran. If you can't read, go and sit with an alim. Go and sit with a qari. Go and sit with a mesab. Go and sit with somebody, a hafil. 
go and sit with your Imam and rectify your recitation. Make an effort and inshallah Allah Jalla will open the door for you, especially in the month of Ramadan. This is the month of the Quran, the month in which Allah Jalla revealed this Quran. Many of us, we pray behind the Imam and we are crying, not because we understand the Quran, because of the melody of the recitation. How unfortunate the Quran wasn't revealed so that we cry listening to the Quran, but we cry when we understand the message of the Quran. Wouldn't it be better if we could listen to the Imam Sab, his recitation, and then understand it and then shed our tears? That would be more loving to Allah Jalla wa ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, inna lillahi ahlina minan nas, that there are special people from amongst mankind. And then the companions, they said, Man hum ya Rasulallahi, who are those people? The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ahlul Qur'ani, Ahlullahi wa khasatu. They are the people of the Qur'an. They are the special group of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah jalla wa ala make us amongst those people. Allahumma ja'alna min ahlil Qur'an. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us amongst those people that Allah jalla wa ala will raise them and the Qur'an will intercede for those people. The Qur'an will do shafa'a for those people. May Allah jalla wa ala make us amongst those people. So this Ramadan, let us make a commitment. Insha'Allah, we're going to take a step to read the Qur'an, make effort to understand the Qur'an, implement the Qur'an, and memorize portions of the Qur'an, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. May Allah Jalla wa ala give all of us the tawfiq to implement everything that we have heard. May Allah keep us all well and give us the tawfiq to make the best out of this blessed month Ramadan. Wa billahi tawfiq wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.